Welcome and a pleasant afternoon to you all. Thank you for taking your time out and being with us today. Hope you all are doing well. On 9th November 1989, a huge wall was destroyed, paving way to make and unite an entire nation. However, on 3rd October, the signing of the Unification Treaty took place. So today is indeed a bit special. So let's cherish and take pride in the chapter of history Germans created, proving that it might take some time, but you achieve what you fight for. That being the case, our German club, inaugurated in the month of July, a first of its kind in Fitch University, feels privileged to celebrate the 31st anniversary of German unification with such a charming and beautiful audience this afternoon. We feel privileged to have the presence of Dr. Jana Ranjan Mohanty, Honorable Registrar of Kit University, Mr. Shobit Biswas and Ms. Majuma Mojta, keynote speakers from Gotha Institute, Kolkata, Dr. Saroj Kumar Mahapatra, Director, School of Management, Kit, Dr. Bishwajit Das, Dean of Kut School of Languages, respectable faculty, fellow dignitaries, and lovable Kitians. Here at our club, all of us have the basic A1 level certification in German language, but it's the mission of our club to promote German language as well as the culture to provide an atmosphere of ease, encouraging autonomous learning, enhancing communication and collaboration to foster creativity and innovation while improving our language skills at hand. But before starting, let me clear that the entire event is separated into two parts. The first session will be a webinar commemorating the Unity Day, and the second session will be a workshop centering German language and culture. Moving on, welcoming is an art, and it sprouts from the heart. To express it at this juncture, may I take the pleasure of requesting Dr. Bishwati Das, Dean of Kitt School of Languages, to give the welcome address. Sir, please. Thank you, Snagni. Uh, Namaskar and very good afternoon. Uh, I, on behalf of the School of Languages, take the pleasure to invite and welcome our Honorable Registrar, Dr. Gyanaranjan Mahanti, sir, an erudite scholar in the field of computer sciences and an administrator of our excellence. I take the pleasure to invite our own Dr. Saraj Kumar Mahapatra, sir, Honorable Director, Kids School of Management, eminent thought leader and a thinker strategic for excellence in the field of business administration, and my director in the School of Management. Uh, sir had a long stint of time in the industry and is well versed in the field of quality and international business from its macro and uh, micro genre. I take the privilege to welcome uh, Madhurima Maitra, Madam, Head of Languages, Sovik Viswas, our German language expert as keynote speaker, distinguished guests, all faculty colleagues and instructors, our student organizers, particularly of the German club, was in, instrumental in organizing most of the functions for uh, promoting the language over a period of time. And our friend from Gotha Institute, Max Muller, uh, our Gusman Chakra, my friend, and uh, our own Pravin Kumar Guptaji, who is a language instructor, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, this is an opportune time which has been created with a platform by our honorable founder, Dr. Saman, to enable a platform where we can interact and share uh, for a bonhomie peace and amity in all aspects of our life. So when you think about uh, peace and prosperity, they juxtapose us together for working on a platform in all the countries, wherever it has taken step, it has been so that without harmony, it has never been good enough for the countries to advance and advocate uh, togetherness. So with this, in the School of Management, as we are organizing this workshop uh, uh, for commemorating unity of peace, if you think about on this of the day, on the National Day of Germany, in association with Gothi Institute and Max Muller-Baban Kolkata, it has been an opportunity for us to 
recapitulate the times when it has all evolved in a point of time when German uh, unified itself. When you think of the catchphrase which Kate Maxim, united we stand, divided we fall, it is applicable to countries globally. So prosperity can evolve only when we think about peace. So it has been epitomized on a context of uh, thinking uh, in tandem with respect to the Bismarck's unification of Germany along the line of uh, Garibaldi coming up with uh, Italy. And similarly, there are many countries at this point of time are striped on and are devastated due to uh, unified thinking and they have split into parts and have never combined together. So with these turbulent times, I think the topic in place is very, very evident to think and commemorate that together we stand and divided we fall. This is a geopolitical issue, much of the dimensions will grow. With these very words, I'd like to thank everybody uh, uh, to be here and welcome you to the forum. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to Snagney. Thank you, sir, for the encouraging word. Now I would like to request Dr. Gyanu Ranjan Mohan, the Honorable Register of Kit University, a seasoned scholar of this lecture, to share a few words. So please. Snagni, uh, Noske, uh, esteemed uh, Professor Saraj Kumar Mahapatra, our Director of School of Management, esteemed Professor Bishwai Das, Dean School of Language, and esteemed keynote speaker of today's afternoon. Um, Great Institute, uh, Max Muller Bhavan, Kolkata, uh, Madam Madhuri Mamaitra, the head of language courses and examination, and Mr. Uh, Sauvik Bishwas, the German language expert, and respected Mr. Uh, Dushman Chakra, a senior German scholar and the mentor of Kid German Club, and my colleague, Mr. Pravin Gupta, the German language trainer of KIT. Mr. Samit Das, the Deputy Director of School of Language, and all the esteemed uh, faculty members, trainers, and their students, and the member and coordinators of German Club of Kit, and your participants. A very good afternoon to one and all present in this webinar called workshop on Unite, Unity for Peace to commemorate the National Day of Germany. So this is an opportunity for all of us to cherish with the people of Germany. So I am, I am very happy to be part of this workshop, which is organized by the German club of AK. Um, very recently, this club formed in the month of July. So more than happy uh, to know that it is organized by all the student member of this club and the students belonging to different schools of our university. And they have already availed that German uh, proficiency certificate course have already. So on behalf of uh, it, the University, I'm privileged to welcome the esteemed invited speaker, uh, Madam Madhur Mametra and Mr. Saubik Bishwas. Uh, I'm also privileged to welcome uh, Mr. Dushman Chakra the senior German scholar who is the mentor of our students of the German club. So my sincere gratitude to all of them for accepting our invitation to deliver their address and my earnest request to them also for a physical visit to eat and kiss uh, on some other occasion when the conditions are normal. And on this occasion also, it gives me immense pleasure to congratulate the School of Language for organizing uh, this webinar. My best wishes to the, uh, especially to the student coordinators of this German club, uh, Snag Nirai, Aishi Ghosh, Srishti Vishwakarma, and their mentor, Mr. Uh, Pravin Gupta, our trainer of German language. So the, the objective of the workshop uh, is to promote uh, this KIT German club as a connection between our university, KIT University and the embassy of Germany and the associated institutions for the larger benefit of our students and ultimately our university. 
so we believe these activities will create an interest among the german bodies in india and abroad which can result in forging the several partnerships and associations dear students uh, participants as you know that knowledge of few languages is the doorway to wisdom if you want to explore the world then learning more and more new languages will help you achieve uh, your goal and kait university is known for creating social impact uh, in the society it is unique in the sense that it is integrating professional education with the core value of our university are bonded with the principles of kindness compassion empathy and discipline and due to the university's salem academy ambiance it has led to the institutional eminence titles being granted by the government of india being one of the youngest university in india we are progressing dynamically under the charismatic leadership of our honorable founder ketan kis uh, samant quality education and research are the hallmark of our university and the university is the conglomeration of 25 schools having more than 30000 students from all over india from the all the 28 students are here as well as from 64 foreign countries so i want to say that because every every year number of students of ours who are going to germany to different europe countries and us for their uh, higher study and also our faculty members are doing their post doctorate maximum faculty members are also doing their post doctorate uh, in some of the good universities in germany so we we, we need more and more collaboration uh, with the best universities of uh, germany so in this way kit university and the universities of germany will collaborate with each other exchange the idea and then a student collaboration staff collaboration faculty collaboration happen a student exchange program that collaboration with the student exchange program staff exchange program we can initiate it so with this uh, i thank the school for inviting me to the in this webinar and my sincere thank and best wishes to all of you hope more and more this first type of event the students should organize so thank you all thank you thank you sir for such for your precious words moving on i would like to request dr saruj kumar mahapatra director school of management kit university a great navigator of knowledge to share his opinion so please namaskar very good afternoon to all of you esteemed registrar and my friend professor ganandan mahanti uh, the dean school of languages uh, professor biswajit das my dear colleague and friend professor samir who invited me for this function uh, madam madhurima and mr sawit uh, without whom probably this program would not have been possible mr dishant and uh, all the names i might be forgetting but who are important in making this uh, program happen uh, at the outset i congratulate uh, all of you for considering designing this uh, celebration today on the occasion of the fall of the berlin wall uh i will take just a few minutes first i'll talk about a little bit of history and culture uh all of us hear about nationalism nationhood and all that and we know today is germany's national day but probably many people do not know the concept of nationhood is a gift germany has given to the world uh in fact uh, before the unification of germany by the legendary bismarck uh, bringing together a lot of uh, small small units lot of small small states who are looking different ways fighting frequently among themselves bringing them together and uh, saying that together we win and uh, by by competing just like that you know without any collaboration we don't gain anything so and and you see the result of that and the urge of unification was so 
so deep rooted uh, in the culture of Germany that uh, post Second World War, it became the first, uh, you know, the first country to get uh, reunited. And you know, just after the Second World War, uh, the Western Europe, many countries got divided. Uh, the, a lot of uh, changes happened in the geography of the world. Until now also, there are a lot of countries, a lot of nations which stand divided, right? And they have not been able to uh, put, put together, set, set aside their differences and come together. And uh, what are the gains of that? What are the losses of that? Uh, Germany has also demonstrated it. If I remember correctly, when the Berlin Wall was, uh, fell and it was united, the ratio of prosperity on the West Germany side was two-thirds. And the uh, East German side, it was one third. Some people can put it as uh, one fourth and three fourth like that. But uh, the prosperous West Germans never thought that we are sharing our riches with the poor East Germans. You know, they extended their hand and brought them together into the fold. And to get today, together you see how prosperous is Germany. In fact, uh, they are leading the European Union. And uh, you can see there are many world affairs in which Germany is the leader. Who would have imagined when uh, the Second World War ended that uh, a country which was at the receiving end and um, would, would come back in such a beautiful manner. And it happened because of the seed of nationalism, seed of unity, seed of togetherness that was sown there. But there is a similarity of what you see the culture in Keat campus. We bring students from diverse areas, from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. And we try to also sow uh, the seed of uh, you know, uh, a global unity, you know, without, without which probably the world cannot actually move together. So it, Germany in, in a German national day is kind of a harbinger of unity in the, in the whole world. So this is about the culture part of it, a bit of history part of it. Uh, as per my understanding, I may be uh, wrong here and there, uh, forgive me for that. Now coming to the practical aspects of it, my experience with uh, Germany and the people in, uh, the German people uh, dates back to my work in Rautla steel plant. Uh, it was the first steel plant in India, uh, which was a gift of Germans to India. They, they gifted the technology with which the Rautla steel plant was built as the first public sector steel plant. In fact, first major steel plant in after independence. And everybody knows the difference between anybody who has visited Raukala steel plant and seen the steel plants which were built with Russian and elsewhere. They would have seen the difference. The, the design of the plant is very compact. The optimization of technology, if one has to see, it has to be seen only in the German technology. That is why we say the language of engineers is German. And that's why you see a Max Muller Baban, a German club in Raukal. So I, I, in my early careers of uh, man, careers in management, though I am not an engineer, I spent with engineers who were, uh, who were steeped in this kind of a culture, right? Of optimization, maximization, and uh, nothing should go west, and uh, everything should be most productive, you know, those kind of ideas. So whenever I think of Germany, I think of productivity, I think of quality, I think of unity, I think of uh, these kind of things. So it, is com it was compulsory for all the graduate engineers who joined the road class steel plant to learn German because they used to be taken on exchange program to Germany. And also the library in road class steel plant was rich with German books. So people had to read that and uh, share with us. Oh my God, I think. Uh, am, I, am I audible? Yes, sir, audible, sir. Okay, okay, fine. So the power backup is working. Okay, here there is a blackout, but doesn't matter, I'll speak. So what I, what I found, what I observed is that uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, the, the engineering disciplines became known as basically the disciplines which have been founded by Germany. And even today, if you, if you, if you look around, that the able of efficiency, in particularly in mechanical engineering, particularly in machinery, uh, whether it is, uh, you know, I think they are unparalleled. So it is, I'm, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, uh, that I'm today part of this event and Keith has thought of uh, starting the German club here. 
I do not, uh, you know, by this I am no way meaning that other languages are not good. Yes, every language has its own charm. So if one, I, I say German is the language of engineers. So if somebody really want to understand engineering and master of engineering, then uh, one need to, I think the language, the German language uh, brings a lot of, lot of uh, you know, benefit for that. So I compliment uh, School of Languages for introducing German and I understand some of my students in School of Management have also taken uh, admission there. It's, it's very good. Uh, only my words, the value of my words, they will learn a little later about it. I, I, I could have spoken more, but I do not want uh, to take much time. Uh, my, I thank, for, uh, thank the organizers for inviting me and making me part of this celebration. Uh, I am sure tomorrow the School of Languages will go places. The school, uh, the, the German club will also go places. And a lot of uh, um, you know, good feelings people who are present today, they will have to share when we'll be doing some anniversary celebrations of this day. And uh, please remember, if you can, the spirit of nationalism. Spirit of nationalism is not different from the spirit of internationalism. It is the spirit of unity. It's the spirit of discipline. It's the spirit of dedication. And it is the spirit. In fact, I was wondering, why, are, why do we celebrate any other day? We should celebrate actually the national day. Only, right? Every country should celebrate a national day. The moment we say something else, that means we are actually remembering some negative things. But you see, when you talk about National Day, you don't remember any negative things. You only remember the positive things, positive things. So thank you very much for inviting me once again. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir, for your encouraging and thought-provoking words. People seldom see the halting and painful steps by which the most insignificant success is achieved, said Annie Sullivan. For our next speaker, I would like to welcome a man whose interest lies in the interwar period and post-World War British and German literature. He is Mr. Sovik Bishwas, German language instructor, Goethe Institute, Max Müller Bhavan, Kolkata. So please. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Um, we would like to start with our presentation. I have a little presentation for, am I audible to everyone? Yes, yeah? sir. Okay, good. So we shall begin our presentation. I have a little presentation for everyone. Okay, so it's the day of German unification, 3rd of October, 1990. And uh, in German, we call it Tag der Deutschen Einheit. Yeah? So we shall begin with this. It's a brief history, it's very short and it will take a very long time talking and uh, explaining historical significance, but we shall just, I'll just take you through that entire period uh, uh, as in what happened with German unification or how did it come about. Okay, so, okay. So after the second world war, here we have uh, a map of Germany and how uh, Germany was actually divided into four zones, uh, occupied zones, and which were one by UK, by France, by US, and by the Soviet Union. So essentially, when we look at the map of Germany, and if we focus on the history a bit, then we'll see that um, in the Potsdam Conference, it was attended by these three major powers, by Churchill, Truman, and Stalin. And what they did in the Potsdam Conference in 1945, that they passed a decision. They passed a decision to divide Germany, or to make Germany a divided country in 1949. So I have here a photograph of how, uh, Germany looked like when it was divided. So we have here the divisions, the Federal Republic of Germany or West Germany with its capital at Bonn and it was headed by the United Nations and the Republic or East Germany with its capital at Berlin, that is the Soviet part of Berlin and headed by uh, the Soviet Union. 
Furthermore, what they did in the Potsdam conference was to divide uh, Berlin into the two zones, the East and the West. And we have here, you can see a small map of how Berlin looked like. And we have all the zones, the occupied zones, and essentially the great divide between East and the West. So what follows next would be how life looked like in the West and how it looked like in the East. I mean, the West and the East Germany. So we have here certain photographs and I'll talk about it very briefly. So we have here photographs from West Germany. You see that there was uh, a lot of work. There was uh, these, this is the Volkswagen industry creating the Beetle company of the car. People had money, people lived a very comfortable life and there were high rise buildings, there were supermarkets. So it looked like, so this is what West Germany looked like and specifically after the fall in the Second World War, this phase in uh, West Germany is considered to be a economic miracle or in German, we call it the Wirtschaftswunder. So this was like how Germany was rebuilding itself, how it rebuilt itself along with uh, all these economic growth. However, um, there was an apparent difference. There was a great difference when we look at life in the West and life in the East. So now I have here certain photographs of li how life looked like in East Germany. So you see in the East under the Soviet power, um, life was a little desolate, so to say. Yeah, so there was dissatisfaction amongst the people and it was not, it was comfortable. It had its own comforts and everything, but at the same time, uh, it was not as rosy and luxurious as we saw in the West. So we have here certain photographs of East uh, Germany and, you know, like the Soviet power, the Soviet Union had a very strict controlling and monitoring of uh, the lives of the people in the East Germany, the Eastern part of Germany. And what they did was they had their headquarters, the, um, the Stasi headquarter, the Stasi was the state police, the state police security. They had, a, they maintained a very strict controlling, people couldn't go from East to West, they always required a pass or a visa, and there was a lot of uh, policing done. So it was not a very, um, it was not very easy to live in uh, East Germany, as you can see. So I have here the picture of the Stasi headquarters in Berlin and how this building is still there now in Berlin. And I have here for all of you, certain names of certain films and series which will help you to understand how life was in the East in comparison to the West. I have all these names um, at the end of the presentation. I will give you all the names in the chat and you can always have, there are certain uh, links as well that I would like to share. So what happened was uh, by the 1960s, uh, you know, people were very dissatisfied living in the East. So what they started doing, they started migrating or rather they tried to migrate from East to West. Now the inner German border, as we have seen earlier, was had a very strict patrolling and there was a lot of policing. So people couldn't go migrate very easily from East to West, but where they did was in Berlin. So in Berlin, they crossed from East Berlin to West Berlin. But of course, it was not that easy as it sounds to be. There was a lot of uh, policing, there was a lot of monitoring on uh, movements and people couldn't go very easy. But you know, in the beginning of the 1960s, what happened that East Germany, because of all these drawbacks, they started losing almost one fifth of their population. So this is at this particular time that they decided to put a preventive measure. And this is when they started building up of 
constructing the Berlin Wall. On 13th of August, 1961, they started constructing the Berlin Wall. I have a picture here of the wall being constructed and how they constructed. You can see here what they did. They started building a wall, not just cutting Berlin through, but they put the wall all around West Berlin, West Berlin so that people couldn't cross from East Berlin to West Berlin and also from other parts of East Berlin. So it was like Berlin was demarcated and you can see the dotted line to suggest how Berlin was actually kind of segregated. So I have here a little information about uh, the wall, the Berlin wall, the Berliner Mauer. It was 155 kilometers long and four meters tall. These walls were separated by heavily guarded, you know, people, there were snipers there, are mined corridors of land known as the Death Strip. So people just couldn't go. So there was a lot of policing done. And here I have a little photograph of how the wall looked like in the 1960s. This is how the wall looked like. Now what happened um, later in the 19 80s onwards, the, uh, in, during the late 1980s, this uh, entire government, this government of East uh, Germany, they started losing their grip. They had a very tight grip on the people. They started losing this grip. So, and there were people who were taken to the streets. They were demanding uh, democratic reforms. They were looking out for um, some fundamental rights and there were demonstrations on the road, yeah? And these demonstrations um, were really big. So we have this link I can share with you later um, at the end of the presentation. So here, I have these photographs of these demonstrations. And these demonstrations were usually termed as the peaceful Monday demonstrations in the East, and they happened in the late 1980s. So if any one of you have seen the film Goodbye Lenin, there you have the, it begins with this particular demonstration where people are protesting on the road and there were this kind of a situation that was actually happening. So during this time, the government of East Germany, they thought that they can ease out the travel regulations, you know, as a kind of a concession uh, to the protesters. Now, but then there was this one great mistake that happened during this particular time that brought about an entire change. Uh, and that was here, I will show you the picture of, yes, Günter Schabowski uh, at a press conference uh, on 9 11, 1989. He was supposed to address the people, address a band of journalists, and declare. Uh, about these um, travel, the, the changes that were actually introduced um, by the German, by the East German government uh, to talk about how it has changed and these relapses. But what happened as the, one of the journalists actually asked him that when these changes are going to come into force, he was a little uncertain and he was scuffling through his papers and he babbled the word, yeah, maybe immediately. Yeah, so this Im maybe immediately brought about an entire furor, uh, a complete change. And then the people, you know, the journalists and as well as the Western television started broadcasting that the East Germany is going to let down their borders. So there were people gathered at midnight at different checkpoints in Berlin and they wanted to, op they wanted the police to open as he has said that it has to be done immediately. So I have here the picture of Bonholmer Straße, that is one of the places in Berlin, which happens to be the first checkpoints in Berlin that was open. And people for the first time after 30 years, they started going from East to West without any papers, without any visas and passports or anything without any policing. So they were very happy. As you can see the faces of these people here, they were extremely happy. And there were also people climbing up the Berlin Wall with hammers and chisel to break it down. 
So it, it, uh, I have a photograph here of how the Berlin Wall was falling, was being brought down. And we can see that uh, this, is a, this is a quotation that I have taken from the newspaper dawn.com. And I have the link again later, I'll show it with you. I'll share it with you. So the police on both sides, I, uh, they, they stands idly by as the Berlin Wall is breached at the uh, Zandkrug Bridge cross, uh, crossing point. It's one of the checkpoints on Invalidienstrasse on November 1989. So this is when all the Berlin Wall, the very famous Berlin Wall actually fell. Now, one year later, it was one year later that the German reunification was made official. That is uh, on 3rd of October, 1990. So it was a big change for those in the West because they were in a uh, a very uh, in a capitalist society, and then at the same time, there the capital was now shifting to Berlin, and the national parliament was also shifting to Berlin. So that was a major change. And for the people in the east who were actually living in this um, a very the switch from a kind of socialist um, society, they were actually moving into a a capitalist society. So there, there was of course a change in um, their lives. So on the 2nd and the 3rd of October, 1990, the Brandenburg Gate, we can see here the picture, was the scene of the official ceremony to mark the reunification of Germany. And all of you, if we go to uh, Wikipedia and if we look into this particular date, then you can also hear uh, the, the live audio that is recorded there. So it was, I was actually listening to it yesterday. I found it very interesting. So at the stroke of midnight on 3rd of October, the red, the you know, the black, red, and the gold flag of West Germany, now the flag of United Germany, was raised over the gate, as we can see here. So the world in the present, uh, with all its violence, divide, and wars uh, lurking at large, the unification of Germany, even after 31 years, is an exclusive symbol of peace and love. It was no political machinations or oppressions that brought the divided country under a united sky. Yeah? It was the people of the nation uh, who decided for themselves the togetherness that they missed for so long. It was their ultimate need to end all the long years of separation and to dream of a country where tolerance, acceptance, and the respect for every individual would flourish as the ultimate instance of humanity that they could offer to the rest of the world. Thank you. And here I have the links. I'm just sharing it to, on the chat. So everyone can actually find the link. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such an informative session. I really enjoyed it and it was really informative. Well, these slides gave us a closer look at the culture and the people that we couldn't have seen in any other way. Well, now that everyone has an idea about what the German club is all about, we would like to share with you a small video presentation giving a glimpse of our club activities. Trishti, please. Eins, zwei, drei, los. of the German literature. First comes the medieval German literature, also known as the Old High German. German literature is said to have originated in the Carolingian period, first in Latin and then in Old High German. It is said to have lasted till about mid 11th century. Ich bin hung hungrig. Lass uns irgendwo essen. Und was sagst du hier so? Das ist dein letzter Wort. Was heißt du davon? 
Nein, da ich bin anderer Meinung. Warum? Wir haben letztes Mal 20 Minuten gewartet. Na klar, du hattest vergessen, einen Tisch für uns zu reservieren. Ach, komm schon. Gehen wir uns Fisch und Chips in der Ecke holen? Gut, weil so schön wir es. We need questions for the answers which has been given. So to begin with, the first question is for Shrishti. Um, aus Deutschland, what will the question for this answer? Woher kommen Sie? Okay. Now there's more to the German uh, traditional dresses or trakte that meets the eye. As I was talking about the bow uh, code, the German reputation for efficiencies also applies to traditional dresses. To save unwanted suitors from investing time in someone who has taken the way a woman's apron bow is tied shows a relationship state. So I'll be reciting a rhyme on autumn season. One of my favorite seasons actually. And uh, so it's called Der Herbst is da. Der Herbst, Der Herbst, Der Herbst is da. Es bring uns Wind hey Yusasa. Schritt ab die Blätter, bringt uns Regenwetter. Hey, ja, Hasasa, where the herbs is the. So, the German language was basically divided into Low German and High German. Now, you may be wondering what is the meaning of Low German and why is High German? These are basically two different dialect groups which, are differ, uh, which, are, which have the difference in their sound systems and these are specifically in the consonants. High German is used mainly in the southern highlands of Germany and it is also the official written language. Now let's look into these two languages in detail. Hi. Six. Acht. Okay. So I hope everyone has written the numbers, all the numbers. So starting with Anashua. Uh, uh, tell the number in English. Okay, so uh, tell uh, which number they rolled in the third time. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Hello. Hello. Ich bin Bibi Girl, die perfekte Puppe. Guten Tag. Hallo. Ich bin Bibi Girl, die perfekte Puppe. <lacht> Hallo, mein Name ist Momo. Ich gehöre dir. Alle werden dich um mich beneiden. That means uh, we, our voice should have the melody to go with it. We yes, should. Uh, voice is the only music we have now. Eins, zwei, drei, los. <lacht> Bravo, bravo. Well, that was a wonderful video. It sure looked like that we are learning a lot. Well, with this, we have come to the end of this session. However, before moving on to the next session, I would like to invite Anashwa, a core member of our club, to give away the vote of thanks. Anashwa, please. 
Thank you, Snehadnik. Well, that was truly a very enlightening session. What with the erudite crowd present and the rich exchange of thoughts and their subsequent Verity, I am sure most of us listening, watching, or simply engaged in today's session have acquired a secure worldview of Deutsch as more than a language in itself. The way Schaubig Vishwas uh, so seamlessly navigated between the profound quarters of the German unification and politics, it was as if someone was truly drawing parallels of comparison between the relative linguistics and political consolidation simultaneously, imparting the mantra of the amalgamation of the two in a way that makes assimilation a less daunting task. Thank you, sir, for all the time you've willingly spent with us today. It was such an honor and delight to have a chance to breathe rarefied air by the hands of a professional particularly committed to the task and to get an understanding of an entirely different tongue in a more holistic manner and thus easing the familiarity. Particularly as a lover of linguistics, literature and, hist and history myself, your words have resonated with me personally, and I am very grateful to the administration of the Getter Inst Institute and KIIT deemed to be university for having made such a seminar a possibility. I would wish to express my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Vishwajit Das, Dean of KIIT School of Languages for his wonderful welcome address. Thank you, sir for saving some of some time for us from your busy schedule. I would like to extend my thanks to the respected registrar of KIIT deemed to be university. Thank you so much, sir, for such a lovely opening address and for gracing our humble seminar today with your presence. A big thank you to Dr. S.K. Mohapatra, director of the KIIT School of Management, for his insight and enthusiasm and colorful presence as he explains so vividly the importance of nationalistic culture and fraternity with his lovely experiences with the German language at Raukella. I thank with all my being Mr. Mr. Dushmant Kumar Chakra, an erudite scholar of the German language, who is incidentally the mentor of our German club, with his unending efforts and zeal to impart knowledge in a way to help us become more adept at acquiring the language. He could not be present here with us in this seminar today due to a sudden turn of unexpected events. He had been caught up in an accident and therefore had to undergo surgeries as a result, but I inform with a lighter heart that he is on the mend and we hope to see him soon in our club meetings. Please get well soon, sir. I extend my gratitude to Mr. Samir Das, Deputy Director of KIIT School of Languages for his enthusiastic participation and involvement in all our activities. His efforts to learn the German language with us from scratch, despite not being an avid speaker himself, is no less endearing. I thank heartily my fellow club member Snehagni for convening the seminar with such grace. Well done, Snehagni. Last but not the least, I would like to thank Praveen, sir, without whom we would not have been able to take our first step towards learning German. His patience and dedication towards teaching us Deutsch keeps our hopes high and interest peaked. Also, I would like to give a special mention to our club, without which we would not be here today. Eine Sprache zu lernen. Ist sie eine andere Sprache zu lernen, ein anderes Medium der, Kom der Kommunikation. It is magnanimous in itself when you realize what your vernacular is to you is their language to them with the same fluency in speech. The best aspect about the club is the willingness to accept this wondrous subject as a world of its own and willingness to walk towards improvement and perfecting our already present, though meager, knowledge base. The interaction, the active cooperation of the coordinators in fulfilling their duties every single time is what gives the club its heart and soul. Also having wonderful mentors like Praveen sir, the man who introduced us to the language, and Dushman sir, who being a scholar and a great connoisseur of the language, provides us with ample support and much critical acclaim to carry on with, keeping both the bar and spirit high. On a more personal note, though, I have a few special moments in the club, for example, when I was first chosen to be a part of the club and a warm welcome thereafter. And also when Dushman and Praveen have praised our wobbly efforts at speaking German so heartily. Ich möchte euch hinzufügen, dass dieser Club eine Plattform ist, um Menschen zu treffen und eine gesunde Kameradschaft aussaugen, weil wir sehr daran interessiert sind, with their club waiters machen, um, sowohl unsere Deutschen als auch unsere Global, 
Fähigkeiten zu verbessern. Ich danke Ihnen für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. Vielen Dank. Thank you so much. On this occasion, let's cherish and take pride in the chapter of history Germans created with the fall of Berlin Wall, proving that unity prevails. With this, I wish you all a very happy German Unity Day. We wish you a very happy German Unity Day. Thank you, Anushua, and thank you, Shristi. Well, that was a good video. And thank you, Anushua, for your good words. Well, for those of you who are just joining us, welcome. Well, this session is all about learning German culture, educational opportunities, and sharing with you a few of our club activities. To begin with, I would like to request our club advisor, German language teacher at School of Languages, Mr. Praveen Kumar Gupta, sir, to give the short demo class. Sir, please. Guten uh, Tag. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, Honorable Registrar, sir, uh, respected Dean, sir, uh, Sami, sir, Dr. Uh, Saroj Mahapatra, all my colleagues and dear students. So, I am Alan Einen for Listen Talk der Deutschen Einheit. So, happy German Unity Day to all of you. So, my name is uh, Praveen Gupta from uh, Kitty School of Languages, and I've been teaching here for more than uh, seven years. It is uh, really an amazing experience to associate with Max Muller team on virtual platform. And I hope I will get to know uh, lots of new things under your guidance. Uh, now I am going to uh, explain about uh, German syllabus and about German demo class. So this is the German syllabus for beginners level. So this is objective. Next is a uh, learning outcome. This is a course detail, a uh, medium of instruction, German and English. Number of hours, uh, 30 hours. Lesson, uh, number of lessons per week, that is uh, four hours. And duration of the course, uh, three months. So unit one, uh, grammar part, first is a greeting, alphabet, vowel and consonant, question words in German, personal pronouns, verbs with nominative, verb conjugation, sentence formation, so how to uh, form a sentence in German, tense, gender, cases, definite and indefinite articles in nominative and dative, Negation, positive pronouns in nominative, accusative, and dative. Time, model verbs, separable and inseparable verbs. Dative verbs, uh, prepositions, conjunctions, imperative sentences. Next, uh, unit two, uh, vocabulary. So first is uh, days. Next is uh, seasons, months, colors, numbers parts of the face and body, clothes, fruits and vegetables. Next and last unit, uh, communicative skills, how to breathe in German, locating objects and places, how to ask and answer questions, how to introduce uh, oneself, how to talk about the weather, and how to talk over the telephone. And mode of evaluation that is a written test uh, 75 marks, is speaking 25 total 100 and the book we follow that is uh deutsch aus from this tracker the studio d a1 so this is the syllabus okay uh learn german so first i will i would like to start with uh greetings so the Begru Shungen means uh, greeting. So how to greet in German? So first I would like to start with uh, Guten Morgen. So Guten Morgen, it means uh, good morning. Guten Tag 
means good day and good afternoon. We say both. Next is uh, guten Abend, means uh, good evening. Hello, hello. Cheers, that means uh, bye. Guten Nacht, good night. Danke, thanks. Danke, Sion, that means uh, thank you very much. Vielen Dank means many, lots of thanks. Next is uh, will common means welcome to welcome someone. Victor Sion, you are welcome. This bald means see you soon. A bye or for now. Next is uh, Auf Wiedersehen means see you. Uh, goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen, uh, auf Wiedersehen means talk to you later or goodbye over the phone. Next, Ansuligung uh, means excuse me, sorry. Astut mir leid, I am sorry. Victor means please. And Victor Sion means welcome after thanks. Next comes uh, alphabets. Drei eins. Der Alphabet Rap. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, Z. Next, uh, umlaut alphabet. So with A umlaut, that is A, for instance, uh, is spit. X is O. With umlaut, that is yo. For instance, uh, hören. Next, uh, with umlaut, u, that is uber. And this is called as set in German. It means double S. So that is called as set in German. Next is uh, numbers. So numbers that is called in German, uh, the salen. Means the numbers. Zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun und zehn. Moment mal, da kommen ja noch mehr. Next is uh, the Woken Tagger. That means uh, the weekdays. So, first is uh, Zontag, that means Sunday, Montag, Dienstag, Mittwoch, Donnerstag, Freitag, Samstag, or Zona Bank. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, sir. Well, that really did bring a few of our memories. To be truthful, German really is an engaging language. The more you learn, the more you enjoy. Moving on, you all need to know learning German can be a bit of fun too. So let's all have a look at a short drama prepared by our club members. Hope you enjoy. Hi. Uh, hello. Hello. Ich heiße America. Ich komme aus Sam. Du meinst, ich heiße Sam? Du heißt Sam? Nein, ich heiße Anna. Ah, ich heiße Anna. Nein. Was ich sagen will ist, ich heiße Sam und ich komme aus Amerika. Du kommst aus Amerika? Hilfe, komm schon hin. Super. Hi James, I'm here in Germany. Great. And I introduce myself in German. Oh. So, how did you introduce yourself? Ich heiße Sam, ich komme aus Amerika. At least I think that's what I said. And my roommate, Anna, she was very impressed. Hello Nick, mein Mitbewohner wanna ich gerade angekommen. Ach so, wie ist ihr? Der Tipp ist komisch. Aber sein Deutsch ist katastrophal. Ich heiße Sam, ich komme aus Amerika. Ja. Anna hat es mir gesagt. Ich heiße Nick, Annas beste Freundin. Super. Ah, allein? Ja. Yeah. Aber du brauchst das uns. Ah, ah, ah. Was willst du denn sagen? I wir hab alles klar. Nick mag das schon. Keine Sorge. Also, das ist eine Geschäft. Ich verkaufe, du kaufst. Ich bin der Verkaufer und du bist der Kunde. Kunde? Kunde. Ah, right, super. Äh? Äh? Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Kann ich nicht einen helfen? Ich möchte eine. Ich möchte eine ähm, Jacke kaufen. Hose. Ha? Ich möchte eine Hose kaufen. Ah, ich möchte eine Hose kaufen. Sehr gut. Und ein Hemd? Nein, nein, Schuhe. Du musst sagen, ich möchte Schuhe kaufen. Ah, Schuhe. Ich möchte Schuhe kaufen. Und ein Schaf vor meinem Hals? Nein, 
Nein, du musst einen Schal für meinen Hals. Das hier ist ein Schaf. Mäh. Ah, ich habe gesagt, Schaf für meinen Hals. Yeah. Ach nein, Anna, ich möchte eine Schaf für meinen Hals. Wir gehen mit dir einkaufen. Okay. Well, guys, it was really great. That really set the tone for the entire session. Coming up next, we have got on Rima Montamambata, head of language courses and examination for the Institute Maximilia Bhavan Kolkata. She has completed her master's in sociology from Calcutta University and got the opportunity to do her C2 level in Germany on a scholarship. Ma'am, it's a pleasure to have you with us today and would like to request you to begin with the presentation. However, just to inform everyone, We'll be running a live Q&A at the end of the session with our keynote speakers. Every can, everyone can post their questions in the chat box, which will be enabled then. So if you guys have any questions, just pop them in there. Thank you so much. And it's also a big opportunity and a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. We really feel honored. And on behalf of Quaker Institute Kolkata, I would like to thank all of you for inviting us. OK. Uh, ich bin auch nervös, weil sie so gut Deutsch sprechen und so enthusiastisch Deutsch lernen. Meine Güte, I'm really nervous that you've learned so well German, you're speaking, you're acting, wow. So, uh, today uh, I would be doing a presentation on what uh, Shobhik sir has already done on the history. He'd spoken about history, so I thought that this would be an opportunity where we learn a little more and maybe this time a little bit in German. So it doesn't matter if you don't know German, this is the time when you can learn a bit of German. And if you know it, you just apply it. You're so good. I will share my screen. So, herzlich willkommen. Das Thema ist die Wende. Now, this Wende is again a word which says the change. Today we are talking about this change, which, which was and especially for Germany. So, this is also called the reunification. This day is also called as the der Wendepunkt or the die Wende. Now, this is the time when I would want you to speak and interact with me. And this way, uh, we will learn also a bit of uh, German history. So you had come across these words when Shovik sir was presenting to you. Uh, so I have these words and what are they called in German? You have to give me the German words for these. For example, let's say, Please activate your microphone and feel free to talk. No problem if you make mistakes. It's only through mistakes that you learn. So, economic miracle. Find out. Wirtschaftswunder. Absolut richtig. Wirtschaftswunder. Sehr gut. Fall of the Berlin Wall. Come on, come on. Fall der Mauer. Fall der Mauer. 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 Richtig. Someone else. Building of the Berlin Wall. Bau der Berlin Mauer. Ja, Uishi, once again. Bau der Berliner Mauer. Bau der Berliner Mauer. Can you say that word again? Mauer. Mauer. Good. Perfect. The peaceful revolution in October. Once again, once again, yes, you're correct. Friedlich revolution in October. Yeah, Friedliche Revolution. 
Revolution im Oktober. Fantastisch. World War. Weltkrieg. 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 Ja, Dingo. Richtig. Weltkrieg. Now, Federal Republic of Germany. You can say that. Und das Republik Und das Republik Republik Republik. 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 Mm, once again? See, there are two republics. Bundesrepublik. Ja, Bundesrepublik Deutschland. Richtig. Now, this Bundesrepublik Deutschland is in short called BRD. Then what is the German Democratic Republic? Deutsche Demokratische Republik. Republik. Deutsche Republik. Demokratische Republik. Okay, now. Yo. And that is called DDR. That is the short form. BRT and DDR. Because uh, just remember these two because we'll be working with it a little later. And then reunification. It's a very short word. Oh, she's trying. Yeah, where she come on. Speak, speak. Wieder Vereinigung. Wieder Vereinigung. Super. Wieder Vereinigung. Yeah. So these are the words which were very important between, I mean, after the Second World War and before the wall fell until the Wieder Vereinigung. Now, another activity for you. Now you have learned these words. I have put some of the events, the Ereignisse. Bringen Sie die Ereignisse in die richtige Reihenfolge. Richtige Reihenfolge? What can that mean? Correct. Correct. Order. Correct. Correct. Perfect. Bring it in the correct order. I have given you one. I'll give you the right. So you can just put two, three, four. Zwei, drei, vier. Just a second. Uh, Do the participants have a uh, writing rights? Because I don't see an option here. Ma'am, they can send that, send that answer in the chat box. Okay. Okay, or you can just speak. You can just speak. What comes next? Tell me. Ende des Zweiten Weltkriegs. First, danach. Students can chat also. Now chat is enabled. Chat, box. chat is enabled? Okay. Yeah, now we just enabled. Achoo, take chat. it. Yeah, that would be good. What would be the second one? About the Berlin Mall? Mm -hmm. No. That came later. The World War came to an end, and then Germany was divided into four zones. They were occupied by four zones, and it was divided into oh, BRD and DDR. Okay. Yeah, so that is BRD and DDR. So then what could be the next option after the year? No, it was all. About the Berlin Mauer. Which shuts window? Mm -hmm. About the Berlin Mauer. About the Berlin Mauer, which shuts window? Uh, window. What do you think? About the Berlin Mauer. Because first the war has to be raised, then we can, then there will be yes, the economic difference. Yes, there was this evacuation between. and yes. correct. Very good. And then it was Wirtschafts Bunda. The West Wirtschafts started Wunder. improving economically. Correct. What happened after that? Was it done after the year? Friedliche Revolution in October. Friedliche Revolution in October. Richtig. What came after that? Fall the Mauer. 
Fall der Mauer. Richtig? Und dann? Wird ob ihr es wieder vereinen kann. Sehr gut. So. Again. Wir wiederholen. Wiederholen? Was ist wiederholen? We repeat. Ja, yeah, we revise. Wie viele Besatzungszonen gab es? How many occupational zones were there? This, anyone can say. Eins, even if you don't know German, learn. One, eins, zwei, drei, vier. How many were there? Vier. Richtig. Oh. Vier. Ja. Yeah. Genau. Vier. Die nächste Frage. Das sind die Besatzungszonen. A, B, C, D. Wie waren die Zonen verteilt? What is A? Was ist B? Was ist C? Und was ist D? Sie haben drei Optionen. You have three options. Eins, zwei, drei. Someone else, not only Anisha. Someone else, Anisha is ready to speak. No, Anisha, you're not speaking. Someone else, someone else, come on. Come on, Indrakshi. Switch D, say something. Which one? Großbritannien, Great Britain, Soviet Union, Soviet Union, die USA, Frankreich. Right. Frankreich is? What is France? France, France, France. yes. So which one? Drei. Option drei. Wow, who said that? Me, uh, ich. In der key. Ah, super. Sehr schön. Das ist die Nummer drei. Super. Shobik, they followed your lecture very well. Okay. Now comes the question. Was war charakteristisch für die DDR und BDR? This was also mentioned. Shobik sir had also mentioned this. What was characteristics? What were the characteristics of these two? Uh, of, of the BDR and the DDR. So, can you tell me? Kapitalismus. War das DDR oder BRD? DDR. Kapitalism. BRD. BRD. Oh, Entschuldigung. Just a second. Okay. Sozialismus? DDR. DDR. Gut. Wirtschaftswunder. BRD. BRD. Hmm. Super. I want to hear other voices also. I'm just hearing the similar voices. Others also. Come on. Spionage. What is spionage? Sir told you about the Stasi, the Staatssicherheit, the police were constantly monitoring everything. Um, DDR. 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 Proteste? DDR. Super. DDR. Democracy? DDR. Hmm? Die Frauen antworten nur, was machen die Männer? Was machen die Herren? Come on, come on, all of you. Uh, moderne Infrastruktur. Beate. Kommunistische Diktatur. DDR. DDR. Ja, gut. Oh, I'm impressed. Now, so this was a time when uh, there were protests going on. And people wanted uh, 
people wanted to lead a better life. There were families who were torn apart. Some were living in the east, some were living in the west. So uh, there were a lot of protests and they were all peaceful protests. So obviously when there are protests going on, there's literature also which, uh, which try to express, there are artists who express themselves through their songs, through their writings, through their plays, dramas, etc. So I thought of uh, sharing a song which became very popular during this time with you. And you will listen to this song. And there's one very, very important word in this song. Uh, this is the song I will share in the chat, the, this text, because I'll be sharing the screen. And then you will see there are some words missing. So the words are also here. See, I've sent you the text. The, the words are also there. These are the missing words. You're going to listen to the song and you're going to fill up the, the text. And if you want, you can always sing. Okay, let's see. Yeah, clear? So this is the text, you'll have got it. And below there are five words. Can someone read out the words? Maybe we can just read it out aloud so that you're familiar with the words. Failed. 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 Traumen. Traumen. Traumen is to dream. Traumen. Okay. Zelt. Sailed. 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 What is Salem? To count. Sailed. Uh, primitive. Primitive. Uh, Fry height. Fry height. What is fry height? Fleet time. That is right side. Oh, uh, free. Fry height. Um, free. Freedom. Freedom. And failed is something that is missing. It was failed. It was missing, lacking, etc. Okay? So, let's listen to the song. Yeah? Enjoy and fill up the song text. Is it audible? Um, yeah? Yes. Oh, yes. Good. Die Verträge sind gewahrt und es wurde viel gelacht. Und was Süßes zum Dessert, Freiheit, Freiheit. Die Kapelle unter Tag. Der Pass war auch schon da und mein Nachbar vorne weg. Freiheit, Freiheit ist die einzige, die fehlt. Menschen leiden nicht naiv. Der Mensch ist leider primitiv. Freiheit, Freiheit wurde wieder abgestellt. Alle, die von Freiheit träumen, Freiheit, Freiheit, ist das einzige 
hear it again or is it okay yeah once more once more yeah okay How is it? Very nice song. Okay, so I'll share my screen once again very quickly. Yeah. So have you understood the words? Let's see. Uh, it would be nice if someone reads it aloud. Nilot Pala, would you like to try? Yeah, try. Jifa Traig is in Kimbakt. Sure. Ma'am, do you want me to fill in the gaps? Yeah, you, you read the entire stanza and then fill up the word. Okay. Uh, we were tased when. Jifa Traig, yeah. the contract. Jifa Traig. We were Traig in Kimbakt. Und es wurde viel gelat. Und was du besum zum Dessert. Zeus. Zeus. Zeus zum Dessert. Freiheit. 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 Die Kapelle rumtata. Und der Papst war auch schon da. Und mein Nachbar war weg. Wonnerweg. Wonnerweg. Freiheit. Freiheit. Is the Einzige. Einzige. Is the Einzige. Is the Einzige the Zalt. 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 Good, good. Franheit, Franheit. Maybe someone else, someone else. I want to hear 
a male voice now. Come on, would you like to nominate someone? Sora, would you like to try? Sora is listening, not listening. Okay, Avantika? Yeah, I can try. Okay, super. Mm, their mesh is like a niche name. Naive. 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 Their mesh is like a primitive. Super. Fry high, fry high. Would a weed a abstain? Abstain. 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 Yeah, that means freedom was won't... denied again. Uh, Ale de won fry her trowman. Troyman. Troyman. So then, fear and nest were so men. Zoyman. 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 Mm -hmm. So then, so then, dance an ock of graben. Mm -hmm. Fry hide, fry hide. Is that NCG was zalt? Sailed. Sailed. Yes. So this is basically the bottom line of everything. Fry hide, fry hide. That is freedom. Freedom. Is that NCG was sailed? NCG means only thing. So freedom is the only thing that counts. Freedom is the only thing that matters. Be it in the yesteryears, be it now or be it in the future. We want freedom. We live for freedom. And we want to live uh, where there is freedom. So this song became very, very popular in the late 80s. And uh, it became during the Vida Ferainagung, this became one of the hymns of the Vida Ferainagung. And I thought of sharing this with you because it's very relevant. And this song is relevant all the time. No, it, it, it became popular during that time in Germany, but this is always relevant because it is important. Freiheit ist das Einzige, das zählt. I hope you enjoyed it. And I loved interacting with you. Vielen herzlichen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. Dankeschön. Thank you, Shona. Well, moving on next, our club does not only encourage improving our speaking skills, we motivate our members to hone their talents and cultural aspects as well. With this, I would like to share with you a short video of our members performing traditional German dance form, Expressionist Dance. Well, Expressionist Dance was marked by the passage of modernism, vitality, expressionism, and a general protest against the artistic stagnation of the old society. Well, the dance was described as an art form of movement. It involved movement of hands and legs. It was a revolution. This form of dance is kind of a bit more expressive, full of spirit and emotion, and less virtuosity. Hope you have a great time.
well, that was an impressive dance. I can't wait to hear Anishwa sing after such a fantabulous performance. So ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we have a talented singer, Anishwa, performing a German song. Hope you all enjoy. That surely was an exceptional performance. But all of them were wonderful performances moving along. A man once said, an individual whole experience is built upon the plan of his language. This stands true for a mentor, Mr. Bishman Kumar Chakra, German language teacher at Gotham Institute, Pune, since 1995, editor university journal, wall magazine, educational counselor, and a polygon as well. His experience in the field is an invaluable asset of our club. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to join us today. However, we wish him a speedy recovery on his surgery and would like to present a small video we have prepared to show our appreciation towards him. Uh, 3rd of October 1990, I was incidentally in Berlin on that day, so I was among the crowd. So, on the, on the was, unification, day, unification day, you were there in German. I was in Germany, I was in Berlin. Okay. That is 3rd of October 1990, I wanted to be part of history. 
So I was in a small town in South Germany called Bamberg. I took a car sharing opportunity through a friend's help and moved with three German friends to Berlin. And on the, it was a five hours trip. German road, five hours minutes, must be a long distance, no? Okay. And it was from down south to the north I went. On the way, I saw that uh, five times we were into the traffic jam. It is called Stau in Germany. The Stau was 15, 20 kilometers long because all the cars of Bundesrepublik, Federal Republic, were moving towards Berlin that day. And the other side of the Autobahn, expressway was totally empty because everybody was going to Berlin on that day. And I reached around 11.30. I went to my uh, host's place, but they had gone somewhere out and they had left a message, but I could not get the message. So I was in their garden. It was very cold. My jacket was not good enough, but I managed to survive shivering there. They came around one o'clock and then I got into the warmth inside. And then I was immediately going to go into the city to see the fireworks. But they advised me not to. They said most of the people will be drunk now. And racial uh, pride takes uh, four seats. So one has to be really cautious. So better wait till morning. So I slept in the morning. I took their daughter's Umwelt card. That's an all-weather card with which you can go by metro, bus, everything. Then went to the German parliament area. And in the previous evening, two, power, two plus four signature was done. Two means uh, East German, West German, and four means Soviet Russia, United States, United Kingdom, and France. So this is called Chwai plus fear up comment, two plus four um, signatories for German unity. And uh, then there was a lot of firecrackers, everything done at night. And I think there were three millions of people there uh, in Berlin that day. 300,000, sorry, 300,000 people there for the celebrations. The next morning around 8 o'clock when I was there around the Berlin gate, there were still about 70,000 people left. And everything that you have to eat, every nasta, was three times higher than the original price. That was the hard part of it. So I moved with those people through the Berlin Gate and around the Parliament building two hours and then went to a Bismarck Museum. And after four or five hours, I got tired and came back home. So that was, uh -huh. I took a piece of Berlin Wall. Berlin Wall was almost over by that time because everybody has dug out and taken souvenirs. Some patches were remaining. So I took some stones from there for friends. And an American was buying a piece of German wall from a, a old German lady beside a street. He didn't understand German, she didn't understand English. So I did my first interpretation in real life there. And I convinced him that it's a good thing to take. So he paid five to ten dollars, whatever. I felt happy for the poor little German woman that once Mark Kamaya on Gilye. Going through university scholarships, you get a chance to stay in a hostel. Normally, a student who goes in vacation to home leaves his room. And that room is rented out to a foreigner. So that student also gets some kind of commission. That's the incentive. So uh, it is organized by the institution, the family contacts. I prefer a motel. But this time, instinctively, I'm searching for a family rest house. Um, so it's because seven days staying in a motel is boring. You don't have contact with Germans. So if I stay with a family, then I can speak in German to them. I'm searching and finding many families are renting their apartments. Many are willing. So you can do that. You can check on internet. These days, everything is there on internet. Another type of accommodation is um, exchange. Like uh, you enroll, certain websites are there. You enroll your apartment in that. When somebody from there comes here, you take them as your guest. And uh, when you go there, they take you as your guest. That means you don't have to pay to a hotel. Some of them are against pay. Like you go there, stay there and pay nominal charge. They also do the same when you are here. And uh, in some cases, it's also purely battle system. Like you open your door to them, they open your door to you. Guten Abend, ich 
Patanabe, wie ist Ihr Name? Patanabe, wie ist Ihr Name? Kommen Sie aus Tokio? Nein, ich komme aus Buffalo. Seit wann sind Sie hier? Ich bin erst seit gestern hier. Oh, Ihr Deutsch ist wirklich gut. Nein, mein Deutsch ist nicht so gut. Kommen Sie aus Tokio? Now sing with your text without music. I will say one, two, three, start, and we'll start singing with the text without music. From the moment you validate the ticket, it should be 90 minutes. So it's not from the moment you bought the ticket. It is from the moment you, it is called Entwerten. You insert that into the box inside a compartment. So from that moment, it, the time starts. And if you are carrying a ticket without validating it, it is considered Ill illegal. So you have to validate it. So, and the distance and time, everything is calculated that there is no scope for any other things. And if there is a delay of the train or anything like that, they would apologize themselves. There will be no fine. Uh, during the official and everything normal course of events, if you go late and then cross the time, then you are likely to pay the, the fine. traffic signal. There is a pole, and at the pole, there is a little box, there is a switch. So, when you want to cross the road, you have to press that. Suppose you don't want to uh, wait for all the three minutes according to the automatic signals, you have to press that then it becomes faster. Normally not in the heavy traffic time, but the light traffic times. So it regulates the lighting and other things. So um, there, uh, there's a tick, 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 tick sound. And um, so once you press, it gives you 20 uh, seconds or, or, or time so that you, or, or before it turns red, it shows you um, that it's time for you to move 20 seconds are remaining, it gives you some signal. So it is so regulated that people really don't uh, like to cross the road because it's a tradition. It is innate in them to observe rules and regulations because cars are very fast. One should never really, uh, unless you see one kilometer uh, turn to left and right and things like that. Unless you see, you should not cross because cars are really very fast there. And about the fine, there is no presence of police people everywhere, but there are CCTVs everywhere where you don't expect in Germany. So today or tomorrow you'll be caught. Uh, out of my experience, I could tell you that when you start cleaning a road, you should not think that the entire road is to be cleaned. Then you get tired. There's a fatigue inside. But always think of one Bajan trees. Bajan, Bajan is jhadu. That means one chunk of the jadu or one bit of the jadu, one bit of the sweep. <clears throat> Just think of one stress, Bayesian stress, one movement of this. And then one by one, you go on without thinking of the entire road. And then a time comes, suddenly you see that that road is behind you. That is the secret of reading. Momo is saying there are so many letters. How do I read? How do I write? She says, just think of one at a time. This is a very good trick for reading comprehension and hearing comprehension exercises in language learning. That's why we saw it even at a higher level. Well, Dishman's first story do hold a special place in all our hearts. Well, next, we have planned for a short quiz. Now, for this session, I would like to know Tala and Agnita present the quiz session. On to you guys. Thank you, Snehati. Um, well, good afternoon, all, and welcome to the quiz session. I am Nilotpala. And Thank along you. with... Uh, he will be a quiz masters for the day. So uh, moving on to the quiz session, you will have uh, you, the quiz is open to all and all of you can answer in the chat box. 
And uh, now let's go to the first question of the day. So the first question that we have for you is, what are the total number of states in Germany? You can either guess the answer or count from the map that has been provided to you. Please send your answer to the chat box. Well, I see two of you have answered and let's see what the right answer is. Let's see. Congratulations to the ones with the right answer. Moving on to the second question, identify which one is the German flag? The fourth one. Could you please type it in the chat box? Good job, everyone. The answer is right. The fourth flag is the German flag. The next question. The next question is, the German Unity Day is observed on? Let's see how many of you are right. Let's go to the answer, please. The answer? The answer is 3rd October. Congratulations to the ones who are right on their type of options. The next question. The German reunification was done in which year? Well, I can see a lot of you are sending the right answers. So let's see what the, what the right answer is for the ones who do not know. The correct answer is 1990. So rolling over to the next question we have, how do we say hello in German? You guys are really fast in answering. I see you have heard what is told in the session. Really impressed by everyone's work. Shall we move on to the answer? Yes, sure. So the answer is hello. Now moving on to the next question. Multinational industry Siemens founder was. So this seems to be a very pretty easy question. So we can see a lot of answers. I know, right, Agnesita? Let's go down, go on to the answers and give their morale a big boost. Congratulations to the ones with the right answer. So for the next question, this company is the world's second largest manufacturer of sportswear and it's based in Heterozonag, Germany. How many of them are sports fans over here? I see there are too many people. Wow, I'm impressed with the number of people who are answering right now. Let's move on to the answer. The answer is Adidas. Moving on to the next question we have. The full form of BMW is, now this is again a very pretty easy question. I love the fact that we have a question based on a meme over here. If few of them might remember. So let's move on to the answer and again, give somebody a star. I know Pratik. The ninth question is, one of the biggest festivals in Germany is also known as Beer Festival. Which one out of the three is it? Wow, people really do have their GK in place. I am impressed. I'm so very impressed by people here. Let's, Let's show them the right answer. The answer is Oktoberfest. So next up, we have National Sports of Germany. Now, this is a pretty obvious one for all the sports fans out there. All the FIFA fans. 
Good job, everyone. All of you are right. Just show them the answer. The answer is pretty obvious. It's football. Now, this is one of the largest states in Germany. Which one is it? Here I'm receiving quite a bit of mixed options. Let's show them the right answer now. The answer is Bavaria. Good job and congratulations to the ones who had their answers right. A cat is called Dash in German. Now this is a trick question. Whoever guesses this is really smart. Okay, I see quite a lot of smart people in the chat box. Very good, everyone. Shall we move on to the answer? Yes, sure. I guess a lot of people got it right. Yes, I am seeing everyone has gotten it right. Another trick question for all of you over here. The bear refers to which animal? Okay, okay. Everybody has kind of seemed to gotten their German in place and I'm really happy that, about this. Please show, show them the right answer now. The answer is the bear. Well, the next question, if smug is equal to smog, love struck is equal to? Can you show them the answer now? Sure. And all of those who answered were right. Let's move on to the next question. Apple is the name of which fruit? Wow, okay, everybody's answering for this question and let's see if you guys are right now. Well, you seem to be absolutely right. The answer is apple. Okay, so what do we call a melon in German? Now let's see how many of people get this one right. Shall we move on to the answer? Yes, sure. I hope to surprise them all, you know. The answer is none of the above. Melon in German is called Melone or the Melone. So the currency of Germany is, again, a very easy question. Let's see who get these right. Wow, all of them are getting it right. Just show them the answer, please. It's Euro. This is a dance form in German. Sorry, dance form in Germany. Well, we all saw this dance form a bit while ago. Wow. Everybody has listened to the seminar really and I'm I feel so happy that our seminar seems to be a success till now. And yes, all of them are right. Okay, so the next question. An institute that provides, uh, that promotes the study of German language and encourages international cultural exchange is Okay. 
Uh, okay, most of you are right. Because of language. Please uh, type your answers in the chat box. And the answer is Max Miller Bhavan as well as Gothe Institute. And both of them are the same institute. So next up, we have the last but not the least question. How do we say good in German? One. You look for that answer? Yes, sure. None. It's none because Guten is Guten is written only when there is a noun attached behind the word good. Like good morning, good evening, good night. That's when Guten is used. When we say good, it's only good. And yes, Ajay Krishna Singh has said the right answer. Good job, Ajay Krishna Singh. And congratulations to the ones who got most of their answers right. And for the others who weren't able to get it right, congratulations to you as well, as this would be a nice learning journal. Thank you all for this session. Over to you, Snehagni. Well, thank you, Nilod Palana. That was quite an interesting session. Now, we are beginning with the Q&A session. People can post their questions in the chat box. For this, I would like to call upon Anashwa to get the session started. Anashwa, please. Thank you, Snehagni. We would now commence with the question and answer session of today's seminar. I request everyone to, to please write their questions down in the chat box so we can present them to Ma'am and Sir to answer. While people are writing down the questions, I have a question for you, for you Shob Shobik Sir. If asked to present the parallels between German and Sanskrit, how would it be done? Because as we know, uh, Friedrich Max Müller was a, you know, a very big scholar who translated the Rig, the Rig Veda from Sanskrit to German. So if anyone asks to draw parallels between German and Sanskrit as two languages, how would, how would it be done? Think about German and then we think about uh, different other languages that actually, there's, in German there's a particular um, verb we use as stammen. So when we talk about stammen, stammen means it's coming from something. So we talk about the Indo-German, the Indo-European uh, group of languages. So it's like one body from where these different languages are actually uh, rooted. So um, linguistically speaking, I'm not a person of linguistics, so I don't think I'll be able to give you an exact answer for that particular question. But uh, what I can say is, German is actually rooted in the Indo-European group of languages, along with other languages. Like, for instance, if you're talking about some other language like Dutch or maybe Swedish, like uh, there are different words that are used in these languages where uh, it's almost sounds the same. So maybe we won't be able to understand everything what uh, in what we say in Swedish, but there are certain words, there are a lot of similarities that one can actually offer see and observe. Thank you so much, sir. Ma'am, I have a question for you. I think on the behalf of the club, which many people will, will have is, can you please let us know certain tips and tricks to actually sound like more like a native speaker than someone just stuttering in German or trying to talk in German? Are there certain tips and tricks which we can learn? Ma'am, could you please unmute yourself? Yes, so uh, tips, I would say, uh, now you have a lot of options. There's YouTube, there is this, there is that, then you have the Goethe links. Uh, for example, Deutsch für Dish, which is a very good community where you can register yourself and uh, you can interact with people. The more you hear, the, the more you listen and the more you imitate. That's the best way. Uh, there are also a couple of apps uh, where you can uh, record something and then you play it and they give you a feedback as well, whether the pronunciation is correct or not. But of course, uh, the best thing is to listen and then try to pronounce it, and especially if you're listening to native speakers. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, I have a question for you. 
what could what could be your take on German being a very popular global industrial language in today's present scenario? How is that flourishing? Or how is it very relevant to our generation of people and why we should be learning German for that, to be more global and more industrial? Sorry, it's for me? Yeah. Yes, oh, sir. Sorry, yes, sir. I, I thought it was for someone else. Okay, uh, could you please go, uh, come, up, come around uh, with the question once again? Yes, I was asking that in today's te technological scenario, like in today's generation, German is a very flourishing industrial language. So how is that coming about? And, and, and why should people learn more German to be well acquainted with that industry, with the industry, global industry? I think when we started the session, somebody already mentioned this, that um, when we talk about Germany, we always talk with, and it is a reality also for our institute at Max Müller Bhavan Goethe Institute. Um, we have many people doing their engineering there in Germany. I think a lot of people uh, travel to Germany to do their different kinds of engineering. They study different kinds of engineering there. So I suppose uh, that's one of the important language when you go to Germany and you want to stay there. And as a matter of fact, when we talk about learning a language, it's not simply about um, whether your course is in German or not. Like there are many universities where you have an entire course or a part of your course which will be in German. But there are many, apart from that, there is also this entire thing about uh, going about in a, in, a, in, a, in a foreign land, going there, staying there and going to a supermarket. I think that also requires the, uh, you know, the, the basic level of knowing German to interact with native speakers. And that's one of the reasons sure. that uh, we keep telling students that um, one has to learn German at least from uh, A1 starting from A1 till B1 or B2 so that you get to know like what exactly is happening in Germany when you go like I'll give you a very small example of this entire thing like a, a friend of mine we were actually doing uh, B1 together and uh, she was in Bonn at that particular time and um, so it was maybe a part of their course a small trick uh, a small outcover that they were given that um, she was staying in, in a in a German family along with a German family in a in a in a house, and uh, the Augabe was uh, she had to find a soap. So and to know the meaning of soap, uh, she had to know the German word for it. That is Zeife. So you had to say that okay, this is how uh, Zeife, and uh, um, then the person actually received the soap. For it. So you see, knowing German is not essentially academic, but also for living there and staying with uh, this is this interaction with other people belonging to different nations. So I suppose that's very important for staying there as well and learning the language. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So we have another question for you in the chat, chat box. Someone has asked, what happened to this start see after the reunification of west and east yeah what happened to the stasi after uh, the reunification well that's a very difficult question because the entire operation was actually stopped there was um, a lot of interventions from united nations and uh, of course there were many stasi officials i suppose it's almost the same thing that happened to the nazi officers after um, the fall of Hitler. And when we talk about the Nuremberg uh, trials, so it's almost the same thing that happened to the Stasis. Not to that extent, but of course, there was trials against them as well. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, I have a question for you. Ma'am, how do you think that, that learning the German culture is a way to learn the German language? How do we draw parallels between those two? I mean, they're all intertwined. I mean, without you, you actually learn the culture through a language. Uh, the best example is suppose uh, when you go to Germany, for example, 
And the, the best way to communicate with them, the, the ability to speak to them in German, and even if it's broken German, let us say, you make mistakes, it's, it, you're appreciated. And you know, then people start to say, come for breakfast. Then you see what breakfast they eat. You share, uh, they, they'll tell you, okay, watch this serial. Uh, this is a nice thing which is coming up on television. And they will talk to you because people in Germany, they prefer speaking in their own language. They're very proud of their own language and culture. So they, it always makes a difference because I've seen it in my personal life and had, I've traveled with people who did not know German and I saw the difference. Uh, and it, it so happened once I was in Frankfurt and uh, so this person said, everyone speaks here English, come on. I'll go and ask, where is the river main? So he goes and asks a gentleman, where is the river main? And he was like, what? And then suddenly he felt, oh my God, what am I saying? So I went and said, uh, I said it in German. And then he said, oh, ach so, yeah, then gehen Sie gerade aus und dann links and 10 meter und so weiter und so weiter. He gave me a long narration of the way. And there lies the difference. Right? So, and I like it also that way because uh, they say that they feel more comfortable in their language. And there are also not only that from the professional side, I have seen a lot of people of our students, you know, who have learned German, gone to Germany, uh, who have finished their B2 level. I have, uh, I think two years ago, I had a student uh, who got a chance to go to Germany and work. He was supposed to relocate. I mean, he had an interview and he came and told me, ma'am, I've got an interview. And um, I mean, what am I supposed to do? He was an engineer. So I said, Whatever you do, you know your subject, speak in German. Give the interview in German. And he was very nervous. And he said, I can't do that. There will be other candidates. I cannot get the job. I said, you do it. If you don't get a job, that's a different thing. Give it a try. Speak in German. So there were other candidates. And then we did a kind of simulation with him. I said, see, this might be the probable questions you would be asked. And you say, it's okay if you speak wrong German. Important is that you speak. So we rehearsed a bit. There were four candidates. Some had experience, more experience than he had, but he got the job. And it was only because he had German. So this Wonderful. was something very, very motivating. And then he says, wow, and he has gone there and he's done his say eins and his exams. He's working also there because once you have, you know, German, you can also work as a part. He was working there. And uh, there were other students, not this one, who had gone to Germany and they were studying there. And they, since they had the B1 and the B2 levels, they could uh, they could uh, actually get a part-time job for themselves. So that's the advantage. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, we have another question for you. Someone yeah. has has posted. How can we interact and practice our speaking skills if we don't stay in, in Germany? I don't know often if my pronunciations are correct or not when I try yes, to speak. Yes, definitely. Uh, so you have to speak, um, I mean, who know German here, you have uh, Chakra sir, who, is, uh, who has been my teacher as well, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, we have worked together also. And uh, yes, and I, I mean, if you think uh, this, as I saw, you know, today in these two hours that you people are actually doing a great job. If you think that we could support you in any way, we could come probably once a month, talk to you on small topics, interact with you. If you think that would help, maybe I could come, one of our faculty members could come, interact with you for say around 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, that would be probably helpful. I mean, we are always there to support you that way. So initially you can start obviously practicing that way or else there are a lot of communities. As I said, there is one which is called Deutsch für Dich. Uh, it's a community where you have the various levels also and you can select your uh, tandem partners with whom you can learn. You can write, you can send messages. So once you do that, uh, you will slowly pick up uh, the notes, uh, I mean the skills, the speaking skills. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful insights. With this, I would conclude the question-answer session for today's seminar. And now handing over to 
Samit Das, the Deputy Director of KIT School of Lang Languages, for his vote of thanks. Thank you, Anushya. Uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Anushya. It's been a very uh, enlightening session for me as well because there are a lot of aspects which I never thought of. I'll be learning today in this short span of two hours. I learned. In fact, we had an incredible team. In fact, the efforts which has been put over the last few weeks is unbelievable. And I would like to, first of all, thank all the audience uh, to become present for the last two hours on the day of Sunday. Because this is what uh, uh, is a bigger uh, uh, gratefulness to you. And uh, then second, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the students of KEAT uh, who made a choice to learn German with Keats School of Languages. Because without their aspirations, without their expectations, we'll, it will be difficult for us to uh, plan our uh, objectives and uh, live up to their dreams. So, and after doing the course, uh, they volunteered to learn more. So we have a very limited capacity, but like we don't have much infrastructure. So the best thing we could do is to think about a club. And there where the students uh, say, it's like we wanted somebody to uh, guide us as a mentor and we will learn by our own. So that's the self-learning spirit, which is uh, incredible, which uh, has been derived, driving us. And the students, uh, every uh, week they meet, they discuss on various issues. In fact, three months is the official uh, days of formation of this club, but it has been operational for last six months. Initial three months, we were working underground, I can say, uh, uh, like a lot of uh, informal uh, meetings we are having, because just to cement the team, it's like we need to have the right people with us who can remain throughout the period, because like people coming for one week, two weeks, and after that, they are vanishing. So we wanted to have the key people who can uh, put everybody together. So we found those team members and it's like six months down the line, uh, we are realizing that we made a good decision to establish the club. It's the first foreign language club of the Keat University. And following this club, the Spanish club already started. Though it is now in this initial stage, uh, we'll formally launch soon and French club will follow it. So these people, these students in this German club are the pathfinders, are the beacon, I can say. Uh, people have to take inspiration from you. So you have to maintain the excellence. So I would uh, thank uh, my dean, uh, Dr. Biswajit Das, who has provided uh, silent support to all our activities. And his blessings uh, is the strength for us. And our registrar, sir, uh, he is a person who is the man from the management and who has been in all our meetings, whether it's a, a validatory meeting of the certificate course or the induction meeting or the launch day of the German club. And uh, in fact, uh, having Dr. S.K. Mahapatra, the director for uh, School of Management with us to get his insight, because this is what the management students must, must also learn the German language. So he, will also be the brand ambassador for us, uh, henceforth after seeing the activities, what the German students are doing here. And special thanks to our guests and uh, our keynote speakers from Gotham Institute, because uh, the relationship with Gotham Institute, though uh, at a personal level, uh, is with this one, the sir. It's in a personal capacity, he worked with us, but now we want to officially engage with uh, Gotham Institute Calcutta as a partner uh, in whatever means, like we want a kind of a resource, all kind of a resource support, like uh, books, uh, audiovisual and uh, uh, human resource, like you, uh, Madhurma ma'am, you can come and uh, motivate our students, give a new insight on different aspects, because this is what we always expect, the kind of a continuous learning our students need to have, like 30 hours is not enough, but if they have the motivation and you have the handholding for them, so they will do marvelous things. So we want them to work uh, with German companies, uh, study in German, like Snehagni has uh, ambition for high studies in Germany. A lot of students have ambitions. Even if they stay in India, 
they can bring in the indo german uh, fraternity closer with their german knowledge so that is what also another aspect and the provincial uh, has been very instrumental in uh, like grooming them at initial level to make them learn the language in a strictest possible manner because uh, the kind of initial thrust he give to the students that motivates them to learn more further so special thanks to pravin uh, gupta sir he has been our german trainer for last 7 years in teet university and uh, we have uh, dusman sir obviously uh, he is uh, uh, he was he is a friend of our dean sir uh, university met he is both of them studied together at utkal university and he was a history student so with history background he went uh, to study germany uh, german and uh, the vast uh, interrelations he bring in about indian culture and german culture they are that is what uh, the fusion what we got to know he is an excellent kind of a resource we have till date and now uh, about the school of language what i will say it's a, a new institution new school in kate university though we have 25 schools primarily into the technology field uh, but our honorable founder sir uh, dr achuta samant is a visionary educationist in this region and also the member of parliament he had a vision that our engineers must learn the subjects which deals with the heart uh, because nowadays the emotional intelligence eq plays a bigger role uh, in success in career and life also so the study of language literature and culture is very much important along with the study of engineering or any technology so at kids school of languages we have degree program for b english honors and ma english that is a degree program but we are also running certificate courses for nine program courses with having five foreign languages apart from german uh, we have uh, spanish japanese french arabic as a foreign language this is a five foreign languages we are having we have two for the english communicative english and also ielts preparatory and uh, ielts preparatory batch we started last month, last quarter and we got good success students who studied uh, with us they are scoring good uh, numbers uh, with the in the ielts exams and also we have uh, two indian language odia and sanskrit we introduced sanskrit in this quarter for october and december and the january quarter will start korean language so this is what we want pete uh, university to be the epicenter of uh, foreign language learning and uh, we will be soon have uh, centers of uh, german studies centers for korean studies the way jnu has the structure like school of language will be the umbrella body and there will be different centers they will be having different libraries different uh, learning uh, clubs for different languages that is what a bigger vision and uh, for the uh, last one year we have successfully done three quarters of the language courses uh, in fact uh, yesterday we had the july to september batch they had the validity session and they appreciated uh, their trainers contribution in making them learn a new language and now we are uh, promoting the new batch for the october to uh, december batch uh, quarter for all our nine courses including germany and those students uh, who have eagerness to learn a foreign language they must start with learning german because there is a there is a system in place which is not in a case with other language uh, like uh, the club will help you to learn more and also you can also try to study other languages as well so the admissions are ongoing and uh, thank you very much uh, for be a part with us joining us for today's session uh, over to you snehagni it's been a great uh, coordination and anchoring you did today thank you sir it really was an informative session as well as a great interactive session for the institute i am really thankful for this um, session because without you it wouldn't have been so successful so with this i think we have come to the end of the session itself thank okay you. thank you thank you